it's time to bank on yourself in 2024. So what exactly does that mean? Well, for one, it's time that you accept responsibility for where you are financially. Again, doesn't matter where you are. And keep in mind, it doesn't matter if you're in great shape or if you're in poor shape. Our goal is to help you increase your wealth. We want you to build generational wealth for your family. We want you to become a philanthropist and make a positive impact on not just your family, but your community, your region, your nation, and your world. And there's a variety of ways that you can do that. But one of the first things that you have to kind of grasp is you have to become financially literate. And so I'm going to be over the next couple of weeks going to be sharing some educational videos to help you make sure that you have a firm foundation and that you have the basics underneath your belt. Some of you, this may not be new news to you or information, maybe you have forgotten. And so the first step that we're going to do is we're going to talk about the compounding periods, compound interest, and why it should matter to you. We talked a couple of days ago about how important it is to understand compounding periods, whether something is being compounded annually, monthly, quarterly, weekly, daily. The reason that's so important, y'all, is because the amount of money that you're going to be earning or spending like on a credit card or on your financing of your automobiles or your homes is all based on how they calculate your interest payment. So this is all really relevant, whether you're talking about an investment that you're trying to grow your money or whether you've got a loan or something like that and interest is being calculated because the bottom line can make or break you over the course of your lifetime. And it can also over the course of a very short period of time. So the general gist of this is for compounding, the more often something compounds, the better off you're going to be as far as investments goes, because your money is going to be added to the balance. And then the next time you get paid interest or whatever it is that you're doing, you're going to be getting paid interest on your initial plus whatever amount was compounded. And then the next time, it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing until you have this really big snowball. Okay, and that's why it takes a little bit to get that financial snowball rolling. But after a while, it's so big that you won't even believe how much money that you're making on your money. Okay. So that's the first thing is the compounding periods is very important. The next thing is when you take your withdrawals is very important. If you take them weekly or monthly or something like that, the more often that you take them, the less bottom line you're going to have, even though the same amounts, it might be the same amounts. Yesterday, if you haven't watched that video, go back and watch it because I showed you the difference between taking $10 a month out of 100 every month versus taking it out quarterly versus taking the same amount out for the year. For example, $10 a month, taking that amount out of your piggy bank or $30 a quarter. That's $30 every 90 days versus taking it out as one lump sum, $10 times 12 months, $120 once a year and i showed you the disparity among those numbers you're still getting the same amount of money in your pocket to use but the results of the compounding and growing your money is significantly different especially as you go across time as you go across 12 months 24 months 36 months all the way up to five years and for those of you who've been following me you understand that our group is all about five-year goals and less. We don't go any more than that, but all of our goals are tied to a five-year objective, okay? So we've got the compounding periods. We want for our investments, we want those compounding periods to be as often as possible, and we want the amounts compounded. We want them to grow. Next, when we take our money out is important. 
if we don't need that cash monthly, the next best option would be to pull it out quarterly. If that's not necessary, then you might try twice a year, every six months. And then the least expensive way to help you grow the most wealth would be if you would pull it out only once a year. Okay, makes sense to everybody? So that is your compound interest. In today's topic, I'm going to discuss the difference between putting a lump sum in versus spreading the same amount out over time to show you what would happen over the course of five years if you did that. So I'm going to share my screen right quick. And yesterday, if you recall, I showed you my favorite calculator. And that was this, the calculatorsite.com is the one that I kind of recommend for folks to use because I, I love it so much because you have so many different options on here. So let's take a look at what would happen if, and these are some of the assumptions. I'm going to assume for this hypothetical example that we're going to be getting 10% a month off of this investment vehicle. And some of you may think that's crazy, but I will tell you right now, I'm getting way more than that on the majority of all of my investments. So 10% a month to me is a very realistic number. For you, it might not be. But for me, based on my experience and my platforms that you know is based on my personal results, I feel really confident and safe when I am helping people try and work through some numbers and some projections to use 10% a month. Okay, that's where I get that. And then this is also a projection for five years. So the first example that we want to take a look at is if we started out with $100 and we're going to expect the 10% per month, this is very important that you make sure that you hit the right um, category here. 10% daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, or yearly. So make sure that you click the monthly for five years. Now, what we're going to do in the next box here is we're going to deposit $100 a month for 12 months. So that's $1,200 a year. So it's $100 a month, $1,200 a year. And then at the end of the year, we're going to take out $1,200 at the end of the year. And that's going to be our draw. We're going to use this as a little cash machine. So you hit calculate. And let's look at the number here. So at the end of five years, bottom right, the balance in the account, and this again is hypothetical, if you know all other things are equal, nothing crazy happened, we would expect that we would have $163,628.11 sitting in that account. We would have put in $1,200 a year, and we would have taken out $1,200 a year but we would still end up with $163,628 at the end of five years. You might think that's some funny math, but it's not. Where is the magic? The magic is in compounding monthly and only taking out your $1,200 once a year and depositing $100 every single month, okay? So write that number down, $163,000 at the end of five years. That's if we started with 100 and we deposit 100 every month and we withdraw $1,200 at the end of the year. Now let's look at the difference between what would happen if we started out with $1,200 cash. So not $100, 
let's see what would happen if we started out up front with $1,200 and then we didn't have to deposit anymore. But we still withdrew $1,200 a year. So we put in $1,200. I'm sorry. Instead of putting $100 a month in, we would make one deposit a year of $1,200. Okay, let me go back. I kind of messed that up just a little bit. You start out with $1,200 instead of $100 a month. And then every year, instead of putting $100 a month into the account, you would just deposit it as a lump sum one time, once a year, $1,200. So you're putting in the same amount of money, y'all, $1,200. You're either doing it $100 a month or you're doing it $1,200 up front. Make sense? Let's check out the math. At the end of five years, that's not right. Let's see here. Let me go back and check my calculator here. Okay, we start out with twelve hundred dollars. Five. Oh, so this is why you have to be careful. See here, twelve hundred dollars a month. No, we want to put that in once a year. So now let's see what what that changes to. There we go. Okay, we start out with twelve hundred dollars. We withdraw $1,200 a year, and we put in one lump sum every year. We add to our account $1,200. At the end of five years, this time, it's $365,377. The other way, it was $163,000. $163,000. y'all. What's the difference? Can you do that math right quick? Well, I can tell you, it's over $200,000 difference. And what did you do differently? You had $1,200 up front versus paying in $100 a month. Now, sometimes that's all you can do, and that's perfectly fine. I'm just wanting to show you the difference between putting a lump sum in once a year versus putting monthly payments in it can be significant over five years y'all that's forty thousand dollars a year difference that's a forty thousand dollar a year difference and let me show you another situation when you put the money in is important do you put it in on the first of the month or do you put it in on the 30th of the month do you put it at the beginning or you put it at the end? Do you think there's very much difference there? Do you think that that matters? Who thinks that matters? Time is money and money is time, y'all. Let's change this little thing right here to the beginning and let's see if it makes a difference. $1,200 investment, five years. You put $1,200 in a year. You withdraw $1,200, but you do that at the beginning. Seven hundred twenty-nine thousand. Do you think that's a big difference? Need to go back and check check my numbers. But that looks like I've got to add it in there, right? I started out with twelve hundred. 
I'm going to deposit $1,200 a year. I'm going to withdraw $1,200 a year at the beginning of the period. And I'm going to somehow magically end up with $729,000. So what was the difference there? $729 versus uh, $365 or 394 That's a huge difference, y'all. I really encourage you to go in here and play with this calculator. It makes a huge difference and get somebody to help you with that. For me, it's really exciting. I love playing with this calculator and playing with different scenarios to see what it would be. You know, $30 a month, $50 a month, $100 a month. All those are really exciting. And for our pig group this year, you know, we are really encouraging folks to work together so that they can put in $100 a month. And you saw what that could add up to be, you know, over time. $100 a month over 12 months, 24 months, 36 months, 48, and then finally over a five-year period. It can be significant. Go in there, play with that calculator, and figure out what one of your five-year goals would be and play with that calculator and figure out how much you would have to put away for monthly payments or for a lump sum and just see. I think you're going to be surprised and find out that this is very doable. Like I said, I have no problems with our group for using 10% a month. Uh, if you're not getting that or you can't get that, perhaps you need to come and join our pig group because we can show you how to do that. Again, pig membership is open right now. It's $125 a year just for the membership. And then anything you do in that, of course, is extra. But um, anyways, you can you can come and join us and learn more about this. But over the next couple of weeks, like I said, I'm going to be talking about this bank on yourself and really giving you all some basics so that you can make sure that you've got your financial house in order. Last week, we talked about the budget, getting out of debt, and all of those kind of things. And that is, you know, you want to set up your four, your four walls and get that taken care of first. Next, you want to kind of free up some income so that you can do some stuff and make your money grow. And that's where we are right now. This is about, you know, taking small sums of money because a lot of you don't have a lot. You know, many of you don't have five, ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars that you can throw at something, but you do have small sums of cash that you could put together monthly, quarterly, or a small lump sum that you could do. And that's what it is. You know, we're here to try and help everyday people just like you to grow your wealth. So I'm going to end that today. I hope y'all have a wonderful weekend. My name is Nancy Gaskin, sowing seeds of financial hope and entrepreneurial opportunity in communities around the globe. Be sure to check out my YouTube channel where you can find all the Facebook lives that I've dropped in there on passive income generators, or you can find it on my name, Nancy Gaskins.